Hello everyone, welcome to IGCSE Physics 0625 seminar. Okay, in this seminar we have uh, several parts. Okay, we will start with content overview. Okay, based on syllabus for examination in June and November 2020 and 2021, candidates will study the following topics. Okay, all together we have five topics. We start with number one, general physics. Number two, thermal physics. Number three, properties of wave, including light and sound. Number four, electricity and magnetism. And the last one is atomic physics. Topic number one, number two, and number three all are covered in year 10. Whereas for topic number four, electricity and magnetism, as well as atomic physics, covered in year 11. Based on this course book, Cambridge IGCSE Physics by David Seng, we have five topics earlier, okay, five topics that we have discussed earlier, and total 23 chapters, okay, so three topics in year 10, and the other two topics in year 11, okay, in terms of chapters, we have learned 15 chapters in year 10, and the other eight chapters in year 11. Okay, now we go to the second part, which is assessment overview. Okay, basically this is how uh, IGCSE will be created. Yeah, how many papers that you have and um, what are the grades that you can obtain. Okay, so basically all candidates will take three papers. Okay, so here we have core and standards. Okay, for those who sit for core paper, okay, for core subject content, okay, you will sit for paper one, paper three, and either paper six or and either paper five or paper six. Okay, our school we opt for paper six. Okay, for paper 5, we, we don't have it here in our school. Okay, these candidates, okay, core candidates will be eligible for grades C to G. Okay, the highest grade that you can obtain for core students is C. Whereas for a standard subject content, Okay, so in a standard paper, we have core and supplement. Basically, it covers, it covers everything. Okay, you should be enter for paper 2, paper 4, and paper 6. Okay, whether you sit for core or standard, you will both sit for paper 6. Okay, so paper 5, we don't have it in our school. These candidates here okay, for extended students will be eligible for grades A star to G. Okay, the highest grade for extended is A, whereas for core students is C. Okay, so let us look at all the three papers for core and extended. Okay, we start with core first. Paper one is multiple choice paper and the weightage out of 100% it carries 30% okay you have 45 minutes to answer all 40 marks and 40 multiple choice question okay 44 choice meanings you have A, B, C, D, M, C, Q question yeah okay so now we look at paper 3 Okay, paper 3 is theory paper and this is the important, the most important paper out of this three paper because it carries 50% out of 100%. Okay, you have 1 hour and 15 minutes 
to answer 80 marks question. Okay, so now we have the third paper which is paper 6. Okay, paper 6 is alternative to practical. So it is a written paper. Okay, you don't have uh, to do practical uh, hands-on. Okay, you have to uh, write it in paper. Okay, and the weightage out of 100% is 20%. Okay, and you have one hour to answer 40 marks question. For a standard same as core paper, we have total three paper. Okay, but this time the difference is the coverage. Okay, for a standard students, the coverage okay in the syllabus it cover core and supplement syllabus content. Okay, so for a standard we have paper two, okay, paper four and paper six. Okay, paper two same also as paper one. Okay, but the difference is only the coverage. Okay, we have multiple choice question. 30% out of 100% to be answered in 45 minutes. Okay, 40 marks for 44 choice, multiple choice question. For paper 4, okay, it is theory paper. 50% out of 100%. Okay, you have 1 hour 15 minutes to answer 80 marks question. And the type of question here is short answer and a structured question yeah bear in mind paper three and four is the highest weightage among all three papers and it is the most important paper okay the last paper is paper six yeah it is the alternative to practical okay it is a written okay written uh, sm okay you have to write on paper and the weightage is 20 percent out of 100 percent you have one hour to answer 40 marks question okay just now we have covered content overview as well as assessment overview okay so let us now see in terms of assessment objective okay so here for IGCSE exam, we have total three objective. Okay, assessment objective one, A01, assessment objective number two, A02, and assessment objective number three, A03. Okay, so let us now look at A01. Okay, assessment objective number one. Okay, the objective for IGCSE exam. Okay, so number one is knowledge with understanding. Okay, so what does it mean by that? Candidates should be able to demonstrate knowledge and understanding of Okay, number one We have scientific phenomena, facts, laws, definitions, concepts and theories Number two Candidates should be able to demonstrate knowledge and understanding of scientific vocabulary Okay, terminology and conventions Okay, including symbols, quantities, and units. Yeah, in physics, in science, basically, quantities and units are the most important things. Okay, number three. Okay, students should demonstrate the knowledge and understandings of scientific instruments and apparatus, including techniques of operation and aspects of safety. Okay, the last one, number four. Scientific and technological applications their social and economic as well as environmental applications. Okay, so in short, basically A01 is, um, you know, kind of straightforward. Okay, they ask students, okay, based on A01, okay, the students will need to define the factual material that candidates may be required to recall and explain. Okay, they just have to recall and explain it's kind of like um, the first level yeah, of objective. Okay, questions testing this objective will often begin with one of the following words and this word we call it as command with. Okay, command with. Command words. Okay, so define, state, describe, explain. Okay, or outline. 
Okay, all these common words we can see. Okay, we can check it out in the glossary of terms used in science papers. Okay, we can uh, check it in our syllabus where you can get uh, uh, the link for the syllabus, the soft copy of the syllabus by the end of this seminar. Okay, now let us look at AO2. Okay, it's the second level of objective. Okay, so it got to do with handling information and problem solving. Okay, candidates should be able in words or Okay, in words or using either written forms of presentation. Okay, either it is symbol, graph, and numerical. Okay, numbers. To locate, select, organize, and present information from a variety of sources. Okay, number two. Translate information from one form to another. Okay, number three. Manipulate numerical and other data. Okay, number four, use information to identify patterns, report trends, and draw inferences. Okay, number five, present reason explanations for phenomena, patterns, and relationships. Okay, number six, make predictions and hypotheses. Number seven, the last one is to solve problems including some of quantitative nature. Okay, in short, we can say this is the question test, okay, based on information that is unfamiliar to candidates and it require candidates to apply the principles and concept to the situation required in the, in the question. Okay, in second um, objective, okay, second level objective that needs to the students to apply their knowledge okay question testing this skill is often begin with one of the following command words okay where we can find in um in syllabus yeah in syllabus so it is the command word is predict suggest calculate or determine okay so now we have already covered two assessment objective okay now we go to the third one okay the last one okay which is experimental skills and investigation okay candidates should be able to demonstrate knowledge of how to safely use the uh, techniques okay as well as apparatus and the material okay including following a sequence of instructions where appropriate okay so that's the first one number two Students should be able to experiments and uh, to plan and experiments and investigation. Okay, number three, students should be able to make and record observations, measurements, and estimates. Okay, it's all got to do with experimental skill, yeah, scientific skill. Okay, number four, interpret and evaluate experimental observation and data. And the last one is to evaluate methods and suggest possible improvements. Okay, in short, this uh, AO3 basically is to test on experimental skill only. Okay, so here we have um, uh, how AO is being distributed among the papers. Okay, paper 1 and 2 which is MCQ paper. Okay, MCQ paper, 60%, yeah, 60% uh, in this paper, 63% in this paper cover AO1, whereas the other 37% is cover AO2. Same goes to paper 3 and paper 4. Okay, paper 3 and paper 4 is structure paper. Okay, structure paper. Okay, same. Okay, the distribution of uh, assessment objective, same for paper 1. Paper 2, Paper 3, and Paper 4. Whereas Paper 5 and Paper 6, so we are going to sit for Paper 6. It is 100% to test on experimental skills and investigation, which is AO3. Okay, now we go to part number 4, which is advice. Okay, we have done with um, content overview, assessment overview, as well as assessment objective, 
now we go under advice and under advice we have uh, several parts also okay it will be divided to general advice and then the advice for each of the paper okay for general advice number one okay we have to read the questions carefully and freely okay don't miss any important information Okay, number two, look for details that indicate how to answer or the depth of answer required. Okay, the details and how depth, okay, that uh, your answer will be. Okay, for example, okay, the question describe in terms of movement, okay, describe in terms of movement and energies of water molecule. Okay, movement and energy of water molecule, how evaporation takes place. So, the marks there is two marks. Okay, this shows that you must make two valid points. Okay, two marks for two valid points. Okay, one point, one mark. Okay, and you must refer to the movement and energy of the molecule. Okay, so because um, the details here, okay, the question asks you about movement and energy so wording such as some molecule have more energy okay than the others okay so we have already talked about um, energy here and that molecule will leave the surface okay so wording like this will give you both marks okay general advice number three make sure you are confident with your calculator Okay, before the exam, make sure you check your calculator. Okay, make sure your calculator is working well, particularly when you are using power of 10. Okay, and then general advice number four, show your working in calculation. Okay, remember, working is important here. Okay, so that you can marks for your method even if you make a mistake with the final answer. Okay, so when you have calculation question, for example, okay, that calculation question will give you three marks. One mark is for answer and the other two marks for working. So please make sure you write down, um, you know, a good working. Okay, provide that, uh, provide that um, with formula if you have formula. Okay, sometimes they will give you one mark for formula on D. Okay, next, always include units where appropriate. Okay, remember to put units. Okay, correct units. And you have to remember what is the correct unit with um, uh, for different, different quantity. Okay, next one. Avoid vague description. Okay, try to write clearly and concisely using correct physics terms. Okay, make sure you use scientific terms okay physics terms don't just use layman term okay you will not get marks okay next one use a sharp pencil for a graph work okay make sure you use sharp pencil if you want to use uh the normal pencil it's not the mechanical one the wooden pencil okay make sure you sharp it um beforehand and if you want to use mechanical pencil no problem okay but if you have multiple choice question, try to avoid using mechanical pencil because when you erase your answer, okay, for example, for multiple choice question, yeah, uh, you already shade one of the answer and suddenly you want to change your answer. So if you use mechanical pencil, it may leave marks there. Okay, so for multiple choice question, use wooden pencil. And when you uh, draw graph okay taking care to plot each point with a small neat cross okay small neat and when you draw the best fit line make sure it is a very I mean it's like very neat line okay thin best fit line okay next at the end of calculation ask yourself is this answer sensible Okay, for example, um, you have okay when you calculate, you calculate a uh, speed of uh, speed of sound in air, for example. And then when you calculate, suddenly your answer is three thousand. Okay, and think back whether that answer three thousand meter per second is it sensible for speed of sound in air? 
it is not right. So speed of sound in air should be around 300 meter per second. So there must be some careless mistake in your calculation. So check back. Okay, next, make sure your answer the question set. Okay, you will gain no marks for merely repeating the facts given in the question. Okay, the last one, the final answer should be two or three significant figures. Okay, so this is a rule, yeah, the general rule. The final answer should be two or three significant figures. Okay, now we go to uh, paper by paper. Okay, so paper one or two advice. Okay, same because it's, it is a multiple choice question. Okay, so when you answer multiple choice question, okay, number one, you must skim through the paper. Okay, skim means you just have a glance through. Okay, just go through the question. Do not miss out a question for any reason. Okay, number two, when you have question, you read the question, you skim this question, and you have to underline the keyword and figure out which concept or formula need to be used. Okay, write down in your paper. You should do your rough work in the paper itself. Okay, number three, solve the question. Number four, eliminate the option one by one. Okay, if you can eliminate the option, eliminate one by one so that you can uh, choose uh, the correct one. Yeah, easy for you to choose the correct one. Okay, the last one, choose the correct answer. Okay, do not attempt to look for any pattern. Okay, you don't have any pattern for multiple choice question or any lack of pattern in the answers. In other words, do not worry about how many questions have been answered. A, B, C or D. Okay, and do not worry about this, the distribution also. Okay, you don't have any pattern. You just have to answer correctly. Yeah. Okay, now we go to paper 3 and 4 advice. Okay, it is a short answer and structured question. Structured question. Okay, here we have two, um, okay, two parts. Okay, first, when you read the question, okay, especially for diagram question, you must read and understand the introductory sentence above the diagram first before trying to answer the question. For example, if you have diagram, don't just jump answer it straight away. You must read the instruction there. Okay, they may be a part of question which require you to use a piece of information that you have earlier. Okay, so make sure you read everything there. You don't just jump to the answer. Okay, number two, when you read the question, be careful how you answer your question. Okay, again, be precise. Be short and precise. Do not tell story. Do not explain uh, back the question. No, yeah, just put there, be precise and short. Okay, number three, if there are three marks available for calculation, two of the three marks are for showing your working. Okay, so three marks, Okay, so two marks working, one mark is answer, okay, if it is calculation question. Okay, number four, when you read a question, if a question state accurately marks or accurately draw, okay, so this is the word accurately marks or accurately draw, okay, we expect points. Okay, to be carefully positioned. Okay, for example, you have center of gravity, right? Okay, so you have to careful uh, put the point and lines to be drawn with care using a ruler. Okay, when you, whenever you have line, whenever you have table, okay, whenever you want to draw a line, make sure you use ruler. Okay, in the case of ray diagram, it is expected that rays drawn should pass at least within 1 mm of the relevant Point. For example, when you have principal focus, okay, when you have um, a ray diagram for lenses, so you should draw it at least within 1 mm accuracy. Okay, the last one. When you read the question, decide which area of physics you are being asked about. Okay, basically we have to decide what is the concept. Do not just look at a few words as you may then understand the question. For example, here, okay, the question mentioned heat radiation, but you didn't read it um, 
carefully. You just um, jump straight away. Okay. Um, it is about radioactivity. Okay. Just because the word radiation is seen. So whenever you have heat radiation here, it, not, it is not about uh, radioactivity. Okay. Heat radiation is about thermal energy transfer. Thermal energy transfer. Okay, make sure every time read the question one by one, read it carefully. Okay, try to think. And in question, always I say to you guys, okay, you have the information there. Okay, so please read the question carefully. Okay, now, because now we have when you read the question. Okay, now when it comes to answering the question. Okay, here are, here are some examples that show the type of understanding that is required to answer questions successfully. Okay, number one, okay, this, this is just, um, this is just uh, example, yeah, not um, limited to this point only, really, yeah. Okay, number one, you must understand the turning effect of forces that it is called the moment of force. Okay, remember, when we want to calculate moment of force, okay, moment, is equal to F times D. And this D, okay, is perpendicular distance. Do not be confused with work, okay? Work also F times D. But this D is the distance along the force, okay? Which is parallel to the force. Parallel to force. And this one is perpendicular to the force. Okay, so that one you have to remember. Okay, number two. You must be clear about the names given to the types of energy and use them appropriately. Okay, types of energy. You have a lot there. Okay, so make sure you know um, the meanings, you know, the definition of each, each type of the energy. Okay, number three. You must know to connect a voltmeter in parallel and emitter in series. Don't forget that. Okay, number four, you must have a clear understanding of electromagnetic forces and electromagnetic induction. Okay, it is more or less the same, but it is not. So, please remember. Okay, so electromagnetic forces, okay, you use Fleming left hand rule. Induction, you use Fleming right hand rule. Okay, right, number five, you must understand the difference between mass and weight. Okay, so mass is constant everywhere. Okay, whereas weight, it is affected by the value of gravity for the planet. Okay, number six, you must understand basic radioactivity. Okay, you should know about the characteristic of the three types of emission, alpha, beta, and gamma. So, for each of these uh, radiation or emission, you have their own um, characteristic. Okay, you have also um, their own nuclear equation. Okay, nuclear equation. And also half-life as well as safety precaution. Okay, when you handle uh, this radio, uh, radioactive uh, material, okay, what are the precautions that you must take? Okay, so let us now see a sample of candidate response from paper 3 1, June 2016, and the level of students is middle. The topic of this question is motion. Okay, so let us now see this uh, question. This figure, okay, figure 1.1 show part of the speed time graph for a cyclist and a runner. So we have two graph here. Okay, 1A, compare the motion of the cyclist and the runner during the first six seconds. So we have to compare motion of cyclist and runner for the first Six second, okay, six second until this point. This point, okay. Explain your answer, okay. So we have this graph, okay, for runner, and we have this graph for cyclist, okay. So what should we say, okay? Before that, okay, let us see the students' response, okay. What the students say. 
the cyclist picks up speed leaving the runner and okay, at 6 meter per second while the cyclist is 9 meter per second with a gap of 3 meter per second. Okay, so let us see what is the um, examiner, uh, you know, examiner comment on it. Okay, this response indicates that the cyclist is gaining speed. Okay, so you just say the cyclist is gaining speed, but does not give details of the motion, okay, of the runner. A mark is called for identifying correctly the fastest speed of the cyclist. So the mark is 1 out of 3. Okay, so here, 3 marks means we have to provide 3 points. And the command word here is explain. Okay, so let us see what is the marking scheme. Okay, the marking scheme say, okay, so uh, one line here for one point. Okay, one point here, one point here, and here also. Okay, first thing first, when we have a graph, okay, when we want to describe about the graph, we have to talk about, okay, if we have speed time graph, we have to talk about the speed itself. Okay, so if we compare cyclist has higher speed, okay, one mark. And then from there, how can we know that the cyclist has higher speed? Okay, of course, we're going to look at the gradient, okay, the line, the gradient of the line here. Okay, we compare the gradient of the line. So we talk about the gradient. Okay, cyclist has higher speed because the gradient for the cyclist is steeper as compared to runner. Okay, and then from there, okay, from the gradient of speed time graph, we can say about the acceleration. Okay, so we can say um, both cyclist and runner are accelerating. Okay, three marks altogether. Okay, now we go to the next question. Okay, question B. Describe the motion of the cyclist between time t and time uh, time t is equal to 6 seconds and time t is equal to 12 seconds. So just now we just um, consider from 0 until 6 seconds here. So now from 6 seconds until 12 seconds, until the end of the motion. So if you look at the graph, the graph is straight line like this and we can say that the speed is didn't change. The speed, uh, the speed is constant. Yeah. Okay, so Number two here, constant speed is required for the answer. Marks for uh, this uh, response is one mark. Okay. Okay. Now we go to the next question. C. Calculate. Okay. This is the command word. Calculate the total distance travel. Okay. Distance travel by the cyclist between t is equal to zero and t is equal to twelve second. Okay. So four marks. Okay, you have to remember when we have speed time graph, okay, speed time graph. In order for us to calculate distance travel, we have to calculate the area under the graph. Okay, area under the graph. Okay, now the area under the graph for cyclists is this one. Okay, this one. Okay, we have a um, trapezium shape here, or we can just uh, combine two shapes. Okay, one is a uh, triangle, okay, which is this one triangle. And second one here is rectangle. Okay. Okay, these students, the answer for these students get um, okay, the graph give an indication of the area of triangle and a rectangle. Okay, triangle and rectangle. The candidate has calculated the area of the triangle incorrectly. Okay, so this one. 
Okay, the final mark is a quality mark awarded to candidates who obtain the value of 81 meter having completed correctly all parts of the calculation. And mark awarded for this question is 2 out of 4. Okay, so let us see uh, from the marking scheme what it say. Indication of an area calculated means we have to say, um, you know, we have to calculate the, uh, the area one by one. Okay, where we can calculate first is triangle half 6 time, times 9 is 6 here times the height, height is 9 here. Okay, it's 9. It's not really straight. Okay. Yeah, it's this graph, uh, this line. Okay, All right. And then it's equal to 20, 27 meter for a triangle and 6. Okay, 6 times 9 also. Okay, so we have here, um, you know, the width of uh, the rectangle is 12 minus 6 is equal to 6. And then the height is 9 also. Then get uh, 54 and we add them up. Get the final um, total distance travel. Okay, for cyclists between T0 and T12 second is equal to 81 meter. Okay, now we go to the next uh, question. 1D, after the first 6 seconds, the runner moves at constant speed for 4 seconds. Okay, he then slows down uniformly and stops in a further 2 seconds. Okay, on this figure, complete the graph for the runner's function. Okay, whenever the question asks us to complete the graph, so what we need to do, we need to draw the line. Okay, and whenever we want to draw the line, make sure we use sharp pencil and Okay, use pencil and ruler. Okay, so since um, after 6 seconds, uh, he moved at, uh, the runner moved at constant speed of 4 seconds. Okay, he then slowed down uniformly. Okay, slow down uniformly means that um, the gradient must be uniform. Stop in a further 2 seconds. So it's from here. Okay, from here straight line to 12 okay meaning for two second okay for two second okay now we go to the next advice which is paper six advice okay okay the first advice diagram should be drawn with care using a sharp pencil whenever you have drawing make sure you use sharp pencil or mechanical pencil will do it is important to be able to set up a circuit from the diagram Okay, so whenever we have diagram, we can uh, uh, draw a circuit diagram. Okay, draw a circuit diagram of a circuit already set up. Okay, it means to complete the circuit diagram. And also to draw a circuit diagram from a written description. Okay, if the question just write a description there, so we should be able to draw a circuit diagram. Okay, together with the component. Okay, okay, you need to know, okay, number three, you need to know that to read the current through a component. Okay, for example, lamp or resistor. Okay, read the current through component. And the voltage across it. The emitter is placed in series. With the component, but voltmeter must be connected with parallel. So this one, you should know already emitter in series and voltmeter in parallel. Okay, next one, final answer should be given to two or three significant figures as usual. Okay, the next one, you should understand that the variables is an important aspect of practical works. Okay, so variable, okay, especially when we have, um, uh, you know, planning investigation question, we have to uh, be able to determine all variables that involve in the experiment. Okay, first thing first is, uh, okay, maybe you can determine the constant variable first. Okay, constant variable. The variable that uh, we keep it constant, yeah, all the time. Okay, we didn't change it at all. Okay, we keep it the same all the time. Okay, keep it the same all the time. Okay, and then the next one, okay, number one constant. Number two is dependent variable. Okay, dependent variable. 
Okay, dependent variable is the one that change. Okay, the one that um, depends on other variable to change. Other one to change. Number three is independent variable. Okay, independent variable is the one that we set. Okay, the one that we set. Okay, for example, we want to um, uh, to see how the string uh, spring stretch, yeah, spring stretch. Uh, we want to determine who's law. So we uh, set so that the load uh, we have five loads all together. Okay, one newton, two newton, three newton, four and five newton. So we are the one who set the load. Okay, so the load is here the independent variable. Okay, the next one. You should understand the significance of wording such as within the limits of experimental accuracy. Okay, so this is the template of um, some of the, um, you know, some of the answer, uh, some of the question. Okay, the next one. Okay, the last one. If you are asked to justify a statement that you have made, it must be justified by reference to the readings. Okay, so this one, you must take um, justification from your reading. Okay, let's say we have a table. So, uh, we must state the value that we get from table. Okay, a theoretical justification in practical tests will not gain marks. Okay, we don't do theoretical justification. So, that's why when I say to you, paper C is the uh, easiest paper because you don't have to memorize any concept. Okay, you don't have to memorize um, uh, formula. Okay, because when you answer the question, it must be based on what you have in the paper. Okay, you must follow uh, the procedure one by one. Okay, the instruction one by one. Okay, in paper 6, in terms of presentation of data, okay, we have a table, graph, and so on. Okay, so the solidus, which is the slash here, is to be used for separating the quantity and the unit in table, graph, and charts. Okay, for example, when we write down time slash second, so time here is quantity, second here is unit. Okay, and if we have, for example, force, okay, we have force slash newton. Okay, what else? Then we have distance, okay, distance slash meter. Okay, so this time, uh, I mean, the unit here, we must use SI unit. Okay, so for tables, okay, first one, each column of a table should be headed with the physical quantity and the appropriate unit. So this one is your table heading, okay, column heading. Okay, we have a question before uh, for us to complete the column heading. Okay, so this is how you should complete it with um, quantity and the unit. Okay, second, the column heading of the table can then be directly transferred to the axis of a constructed graph. Okay, B, we have graph. Okay, second presentation of data, we have graph here. Okay, the first one, unless instructed otherwise, the independent variable should be plotted on x-axis. So, x-axis is um, independent variable. Okay, for example, if we have um, Hood's law, Okay, um, Hood's law experiment. So we have force as our independent variable. Okay, so we plot as x axis or horizontal axis. And the dependent variable, okay, we plot on the y axis. Okay, so here for Hood's law, we have extension. Okay, we have extension as our dependent variable. Okay, the next one, each axis should be labeled with the physical quantity and appropriate unit. Okay, um, as you can see um, from just now, we have um, emphasized on quantity and unit. Okay, so make sure every quantity, you must know what is the correct unit, the SI unit for it. Okay, number three, unless instructed otherwise, the scale for the axis should allow more than half of the grid. Okay, so when you do your scale, okay, it should be more than half of the grid be used okay, in both directions, either in y-axis or x-axis. Okay, and be based on sensible ratio. 
Okay, for example, 2 cm on the graph, grid representing 1, 2, or 5 units of the variable. Okay, you don't, okay, this one is um sensible ratio. Okay, don't pick 3, don't pick 6, don't pick um, 9. Okay, this one is not allowed. Okay, make sure it is either in uh, uh, multiplies of uh, 1, 2, or 5. Okay, the graph is the whole diagrammatic presentation, including the best fit line. Okay, best fit line when appropriate. It may have one or more sets of data plotted on it. Okay, so basically, for graph, okay, we have touch here on the axis. Okay, correct axis and with the correct labeling will give you one mark. Okay, for graph, normally it is four marks. So, axis one mark. And then here, scale, yeah, we talk about scale here. Okay, scale one mark. Okay, now we go to the next one. The okay, points on the graph should be clearly marked as cross or encircle dots. Okay, I prefer cross because it is more um, accurate compared to dot. Okay, dot like this. Okay, so, okay uh, the next one, large dots are penalized. Each data point should be plotted to an accuracy of better than one half of each of the smallest square on the grid. Okay, so um, your mark, okay, your plot should not be too big should not be too small okay let's see if you have um your grid okay in your graph for example like this yeah this is your grid okay when you plot should be enough it is uh you see here better than one half of each of the smallest square on the grid okay just more or less like half of the square is very small okay very small, not so big, not so small. If it is big, then you will not get marked from your plotting. Okay, next one. A best fit line or trend line should be single, thin, smooth, straight line or curve. Okay, that is why uh, important. Okay, that is uh, important for you to use mechanical pencil or very sharp pencil. Okay, for you to draw a straight line. Okay, the line does not need to coincide exactly with any of the point where there is scattered evident data. Examiner would expect roughly even distribution of points either side of the line over its entire length. Points that are clearly anomalous should be ignored when drawing the best fit line. Okay, so what does it mean? Okay, let's say we have graph like this. Okay, this is our x axis. This is our okay. This is uh, our y axis. Okay, and then our our point is like this. And then one point is like very very far away. Okay, this is considered anomalous, so we should not consider this point when we draw our best fit line we just consider this one two three four okay four points and we take ruler and we should draw straight line like this okay this one is not so straight just imagine this one straight line okay make sure you take a ruler okay make sure you take ruler and draw uh, and balance okay the points um top and bottom of the line Okay, so that's a uh, best fit line. Okay, next one, last one. The gradient of a straight line should be taken using a triangle whose hypotenuse extends over at least half of the length of the best fit line, and this triangle should be marked on the graph. Okay, it is a normal thing when they ask you to calculate. Uh, you use the graph to calculate the gradient. So when you want to calculate the gradient, what you need to do, you have to use at least half of the graph. Okay, when you have this line, right? So you mark here with the triangle, yeah? The triangle, so this is your triangle, okay? And you should mark on your graph, and this is, okay, you put your coordinate as 1 at y1, and this one is x2, y2. Then you work out your gradient is equal to, K 
Okay, what you have learned in mathematics also same here. Y2 minus Y1 divided by X2 minus X1. Okay, and this triangle you should use more than half of your graph. Okay, that's what it means. Okay, so just now um, we already have okay the previous uh, slide there yeah, we have axis. We give you one point, and then we have scale, another one point, and here we have plot, okay, one point. The last one is best fit line. Again, BFL here is for best fit line, one point. So total four marks for graph, okay. Okay, see, we have bar charts. These are drawn when one of the variables is not numerical. Uh, normally in physics, seldom they ask about bar chart. The normal is um, graph, yeah, the straight line graph. The numerical result data should be recorded so as to reflect the precision of the measuring instrument. Okay, for example, uh, if we have um, vernier caliper. Okay, vernier caliper, it should measure up to two decimal points. For example, we have 1.01 centimeter. Okay, so that one is vernier caliper. Okay, the number of significant figures given for calculated quantities should be appropriate to the least number of significant figures in the raw data use. Okay, so we must pay attention to the significant figure. Okay, after the exam, okay, what you should know, okay, in terms of grading, you grade A star, A, B, C, D, E, F, or G indicate the standard of candidate achieved at Cambridge by GCSE. A star is the highest, G is the lowest. Okay, A star is highest, G is the lowest. Ungraded, which is U, okay, means that the candidate's performance did not meet the standard required for grade G. And data is reported on the statement of result but not on the certificate. Okay, the statement of the result not on the certificate. Okay, in specific circumstances, your candidates may see one of the following data on their statement of result. Okay, Q, result pending, X, no result, Y to be issued. Okay, so now at the end of the uh, seminar, Okay, we have our resources, which is syllabus and learner guide. Okay, you may get uh, syllabus from this link and learner guide from this link. You may pause the video and you may get the, um, the soft copy of syllabus and learner guide from the link below. Okay, so now I hope that uh, you guys um, you know get roughly what you should pay attention okay, in terms of the advice for each of the paper in terms of the coverage in terms of the assessment okay and i wish you all the best in your exam okay either for more exam or the real ig okay thank you everyone thank you for watching bye bye